Welcome back everybody, my name is Taylor Martin, this is The Best MEDC, and today I've got another video for you. Today I'm going to answer probably one of the most asked questions here on the channel, which is, what are all those lanyards for? Why do you have a bead on everything? What purpose do they serve? And also, not to forget, how do you tie all those lanyards? I want to know. Show me how to tie those lanyards. I'm going to tell you what it's about, why everybody seems to have a lanyard on everything, and how to tie some of my favorite lanyard knots. So with all of that said, let's do the damn thing. So when it comes to lanyards on your gear, there are probably four solid reasons why people do it. And the biggest reason, without a doubt, is style. It just adds a little bit of flair to your gear. Like I see a picture of this anywhere I know it's mine, but most people will kind of know me for this little leather lanyard and a bead on it. Obviously I'm not the pioneer of that. People have been doing this for a long time, but as you see, a lot of my gear has a small little brass or bronze bead, sometimes copper, and a little short leather lanyard with a single snake knot. That's just what I like. It looks good, it adds my little personal flair to whatever piece I have whether it's a wallet, a knife, a pry tool, or a utility knife, whatever the gear is, if I throw a little leather lanyard on there, it's mine. You know, it just makes it more mine than it would be right off the shelf. This right here, for instance, these two beads, which you can buy over on Carry Commission, are the Lil Nuke from Zero Feud and Rips Garage Tech. It's just a little collaboration from them, and it looks like a little bomb. My favorite beads, probably by far, are the hammered bronze beads from Urban Carvers. I also sell these knurled brass beads on carry commission, and these also are uh, from Urban Carvers. A lot of the bronzed beads are. I have a lot of different beads here, and as you can see with this one, the combat bead is just unique, and it makes your knife yours. That's really all there is to it. I would say that's like 75 to 85% of the reason people use beads and lanyards on their knives. When it comes to utilitarian reasons, the biggest one is probably indexing. So if you have this down in your pocket, it is sticking out of your pocket a little bit. You can grab that pretty easily and pull it out. This just gives you a little more to grab when you're trying to get your knife out of your pocket. A better example, which of course I don't have a lanyard on this, but a better example is a knife with a deep carry clip. So this, when it is in your pocket, is almost completely concealed. All the sticking out is the clip, which means you have to put your hand down in your pocket, or at least a thumb, to pull the knife out. It's really not that much more difficult or time consuming or anything, but having something sticking out of your pocket just makes it a little, maybe marginally quicker to grab. Now, a more specific use case is if you have something like this. This is the Mini Trio from Tale of Knives and the small subenza fits perfectly in this, but it's actually kind of tough to get the knife out. You've got to either bend the leather back and pull or grip it at a really awkward angle and pull it out. This way, if you have a lanyard on there, you can just kind of grab that and pull. Just gives you a lot more of a purchase to get your knife out of the holster or organizer or whatever it's in. And that is just indexing, getting the knife in your hand and out of your pocket or sheath or whatever. It just makes that process a little easier, just marginally. Another example, I have a Swiss Army knife in my coin pocket here, or fifth pocket, utility pocket, if you will. And having just a little short lanyard on this makes it a lot easier. I can turn this sideways in that pocket and still get the knife out. Without this, I kind of have to dig around in there to get this out and in my hand. But with that little leather lanyard, it just makes it a little easier to grab. That's all there is to it. Another reason, and one that I wouldn't really say I use for myself unless I'm camping or using like a fixed blade, is actually hanging the knife. As you can see, my leather lanyards are kind of short, but it does have enough room that you could hang this on a nail or something just using that lanyard. I wouldn't do that with most of my EDC knives. I mean, throw it in my pocket, right? But if you are carrying a bigger knife or a camp knife, like around my camp kitchen, I like to have hanging space and different hooks and stuff I can hang things from. And I do that with my fixed blades. With this gear, really not so much. But the final reason you might wanna put a lanyard on your gear, especially with maybe a smaller knife, like the Half Dome here from Summit Knife Company. But if you have slightly larger hands than I do, having a lanyard on the end of your knife, if you don't prefer a bigger knife, or if you legally can't carry a bigger knife, having a lanyard on the end helps you get a better purchase on that knife. I wish I had brought the Coke Tools Wasp because that's a perfect example of how a lanyard can help you get a better purchase. But another one is the TPT or TPT Slide. I always, 
always add a lanyard to these. Normally, without a lanyard, I can only get about three fingers on this to get a good grip, but with the lanyard, I can put my pinky around this and pull with my pinky and get a much firmer grip, a much better purchase on this tool. And that is a true reason, like a real reason that I carry a lanyard. And I think this is what I really started with the lanyards on was the TPT. Again, just going back, I think probably the main reason most people have lanyards and beads is style points. You can throw a Star Wars bead on your knife and it's truly, truly yours. I know that's probably a little anticlimactic, but that's just the reality of it. I've got a couple of knives here that I want to tie lanyards on that I just never have. And I've got a couple of beads over here, and I have two best MEDC versions of the Giltec Ruck. I just got two orders for these, and I do tie all of these as the orders come in. So I'm doing all of these by hand. This is the leather lace I use. It is Latigo lace, eighth of an inch wide. This is a 50 foot spool, and I just take about, I guess about six inches, and I cut it at an angle. So you can see this end is already at an angle. I take this end and just pop. And I've got my lanyard for the Giltec Rucks. What I do is, since this leather has some give to it, I put it through the lanyard loop on the ruck and just give it a little pull to stretch it out a little bit, thread the bead on, and then on these, I tie what is a snake knot. So typically when you see a snake knot, you'll see it for long runs. Um, but you can do it just one time and it'll stay quite nicely. So the way I learned was to have the knot facing you or the, the tag ends facing you and to twist this left side under itself like this. So you create this loop, you take the right side tag end, go through that loop, around your other tag end, and then down through the loop one more time, same loop twice. And then you snug up both ends. And that's all there is to the snake knot. I can do that one more time maybe to show you again, uh, but that is how I've gotten pretty proficient at it because I've done it dozens of times now in the last couple of days. But that's how you tie the snake knot on these. It's very, very easy and it's not going anywhere. It's not gonna come loose. You can readjust it with a little force uh, but that is how I do all of these lanyards on the Giltec Ruck. I'll do it one more time. So I take six inches of lace, which I could probably actually go with just a little less. I thread it through the lanyard loop, give it a little tug and thread the bead on. And the way I've been doing this, I showed you with it facing me, I tend to now tie it facing away from me. I just find it a little easier. Take this right tag end and twist towards the other tag and it's under itself. Take the other tag end, put it through that loop, bring it around the other tag end and push it back through the loop a second time. It takes some practice. It's a little confusing at first, but really I think I got this after just a couple of minutes. Practicing it did help. I mean, I did it a lot, but now I know about exactly how much leather I need, just about six inches, and I can tie this just about perfectly every single time. So there you go, that is the snake knot and the one that you see on all of my knives pretty much. There is one more and I'll show you that one. It's much simpler. If you can't get that, there is another lanyard tie that you can do that, that'll give you about the exact same effect. The difference is you won't have your tag ends separate like this, they'll be together. And that's just a simple overhand knot. So on this knife, I'm going to tie on this brass bead here, or bronze bead. So I'm gonna push the lanyard through, once again, I'm gonna pull just to kind of give it a little more length, just to stretch out that leather just a little bit. And this one is much easier. You've done this knot a million times. It's just a simple overhand knot, but you're doing it with both ends. So push it through the bead, pull the bead all the way down. And then you're just going to tie an overhand knot. I might not have given myself enough leather this time. So once you get both ends through, you just snug it up and you can work it down so you have more of a tag in so it won't come undone because this one is a little more prone to come undone than the snake knot. And I just don't think it looks quite as nice once it's finished. It looks okay, but my favorite is definitely the snake knot. It's a little smaller, slimmer, and in my opinion, just as easy to tie. So while all of my lanyards tend to be leather, I do use paracord from time to time and a lot of other people use paracord. 
it's a little cheaper, it's easier to find, and you can get a little crazier with it. You can hollow out by pulling out the core threads, and you can do some pretty interesting stuff with paracord, and you can thread it through smaller beads, so on and so forth. I just prefer leather over paracord, but when I am using paracord, there is a knot that I like to use, and it's called the diamond knot. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread this through here. And this is one of the reasons I don't like paracord, is it's just a little more difficult to thread through. So for a diamond knot, I don't have an example, but I'm just gonna have to tie it and show you what the diamond knot looks like. The way I learned to tie the diamond knot is by putting it through your fingers like this right here. You sandwich your two middle fingers between the cord and you take and fold the right hand, the, the cord towards your pinky, that tag end, under itself. And this one gets complicated. So you take the other tag end, go around that, then you pull this part, this little hump up through the center of that loop and you take that same tag end and go through itself, right? Pretty complex move there, but it, once you try this a couple of times, it's not so bad. I'll do that again. So you take the pinky side, and loop it under itself. You take the other tag end and go underneath that tag end and take the loop left and come through this other loop. Take the first tag end that you had in your hand still and come back through. It's, I don't know how to explain that move. It's a very complicated maneuver. I'll do it one more time. You just might have to watch this several times or look up a really great tutorial. I think Paracord Weavers of Eternity, is that the channel? I think that's who I learned this from. Once again, you loop the pinky side under itself, take this other tag end, my cord doesn't wanna work with me now, and go under the tag end, bring this hump up through the loop, and go through it. And what that does is create this little square diamond in the center right there, right? So you take the same tag end that you started with, go underneath one more time around and come up through that diamond with this tag end. Excuse my really janky tag end. And you're gonna do the same thing with this other tag end that you haven't touched since the beginning. Take it around, you wanna come around this piece right here and come up through that same diamond. So your tag ends will come up through the same part in the paracord, in the knot. And then you're just gonna snug it up and give it shape. So you just have to kind of weave through and pull and tighten and lengthen to your desired length. And it does get, it can get away from you. You might have to start over a couple of times to get it just right. But you want to slowly work your way through this knot to cinch it up, but you just wanna pull some slack out there, find out where the next piece is, pull that slack out, and then just continue around the knot until it's all cinched up. Might be close enough to where I can just really pull on both ends and cinch it, and I think I am. You really just wanna start tightening it slowly and then you can just start pulling on the whole thing once you've really got it about the length you want it. That's probably a little longer than I would want, but for the sake of this video, I think it works. And this is what the diamond knot looks like when it's almost finished. So you wanna cut off your tag ends and burn them. And I always slam them down on something metal to really kind of get them as flush as possible. That is how I do my diamond knot. So these are the three knots that you will typically see on my knives. I mostly use this one, the snake knot, I almost always have a bead on there just for a little flare, uh, but the snake knot, the diamond knot, and just a simple overhand. I don't use this one a lot unless I'm not using a bead on the lanyard. And where you can get these leathers, you can find corded leather like this at like a Hobby Lobby or any hobby store really, but you can also just buy boot laces. Uh, let's see if I have an example of boot laces. I think I do. Actually, this one right here, the proper. This is a leather boot lace, I believe, from Walmart or Target. Um, you can get them for four or five bucks, sometimes 10 bucks, but, but your boot laces are enough to tie several lanyards. The only thing I've noticed with it is that it's a little thicker than the cord that you get from the craft store, but um, if you don't mind just a slightly bulkier knot, that shouldn't be a problem. So there you have it. That is why you would have a lanyard on your knife and also how to tie a couple of the knots. 
That is going to do it for this video. If you found it helpful and you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below and subscribe to see more stuff like this in the future and hit that notification bell so you're notified when I upload new videos. If you want to purchase anything you saw in this video, it'll all be linked down below, including the leather, the paracord, the beads, everything will be linked down below. And if you click through and purchase anything using those links, those are affiliate links and I get a little bit of a kickback. It doesn't cost you anything extra. It's just a way for you to show support and get the stuff you wanted to buy anyway. You can also go to patreon.com forward slash best MEDC. And of course, be sure to follow us around the web. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at best MEDC. You can find me, Taylor Martin, on Twitter and Instagram at Casper Tech. And until next time, carry on.